like that. Ain't paying me no heed. Who's the best broad buster this side of the territory? You, I bet. Uh-huh. And who's the best bulldog in the 17 counties? Me, that's who. And look at here. I'm handsome, aren't I? Hardy as a pitcher. Curly-headed, aren't I? And bow-legged from the saddle for God knows how long, aren't I? Couldn't stop a pig in the road. So then what else does she want, the damn she-mule? I don't know, but I'm sure for certain it ain't you. Who are you taking to the box social tonight? Well, I, I ain't thought much about it. Bet you come over to ask Lori. What well, if I did? You asking me to? I'll wear my fascinator. <laughs> Not you too, Ann Eller. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. you were somebody. I got a beautiful feeling. Everything's going my way. Is this all that's come calling and it's already 10 o'clock on a Saturday morning? You, you know it was me. You heard my voice and you know it was no me. No such a thing. Y yes, you did. Before you opened the door, you heard my voice and you know it was me. 
Well, I hear the voice talking nimbly along with Aunt Eller, and I hear the voice singing like a bullfrog in a pond. <laughs> you know what? You know it was me, so you sitting there thinking of something mean to say. I'm a good mind not to take you to the box social. Well, if you did ask me, I would go with you. Besides, how'd you take me? You ain't got a buggy with red wheels on it, have you? No. And a spanking team with their bridles all a jingling? Well, well, no, I ain't. Expect me to ride an old dun, I guess. You better ask that old Cummings girl you took such a shine to over across the river. You know, if I was to ask you, Miss Laura Smarter, there'd be a way to take you. Mm, there would. <laughs> when I take you out tonight with me, honey, here's the way it's gonna be. You will set behind a team of snow white horses in the grandest gig you've ever seen. Lambs! Chicks and ducks and geese better scurry when I take you out in the Surrey. When I take you out in the Surrey with the fringe on top. Watch that fringe and see how it flutters when I drive those high step and stutters. Nosy folks will out their shutters and their eyes will pop. The wheels are yellow, the upholstery is brown, the dashboard's genuine leather. With eyes and glass curtains, you can roll right down in case there's a change in the weather. Two right side lights are winking and a blinking. Ain't no finer rig, I'm a thinking. You can keep your rig if you're thinking that I care to swap. For that shiny little story with the fridge on the top. Would you say the fringe was made of silk? <laughs> Wouldn't have no other kind of silk. Has it really got a team of snowy horses? One's like snow. The other's more like me. Oh, so you can tell them apart? All the world will fly in a flurry when I take you out in the Surrey. When I take you out in the Surrey with the fringe on top. When we hit that road, hell for leather, cats and dogs will dance in the heather, frogs and birds will sing all together, and the toads will hop. The wheels will whistle as we rattle along, the cows will moo in the clover. The river will ripple out a whispered song and whisper it over and over. Don't you wish it go on forever? Don't you wish it go on forever? Don't you wish it go on forever? And it never stop with that shiny little story with the fridge on the top. You sure feel like a queen sitting up in that carriage? Only she was so mean to me a while ago, and Ella. I'm, I'm a good mind not to take her. Wait, said I was going. Well, I ain't asked you. Where did you get such a rig in? Oh, probably hard ring over to Claremore thinking I'd go with him. That's all you know about Spent it. Spent all his money hiring a ring and got nobody to ride in it. D did not. Did not hire it. Made the whole thing up out of my head. What? Dashboard yes, and all. <laughs> get off the place, you and Ella. Make himself get out of here. Oh, make it up a few parties and it gets no. Well, now, now, you watch out now. You watch out now. What's wrong with that thing? Making up a few parties and it gets no law. I heard of. But wouldn't you wish there was such a rig, though? Then you could do the dance and play parties all night. The whole day until morning, if you put your mind to it. Then when he was tired, I'd set you up onto that surrey and I'd set up alongside you. I can just picture the whole thing. I can see the stars getting blurry when we head on home in Surrey. When we head back home in the Surrey with the friend on top. I can see the day getting older. Feel a weary head near my shoulder. Got him grouping close to my shoulder till it falls. Good pop. 
dust sun is setting on the edge of the hill. The moon is taking a hit of her. And just when I'm thinking all the earth is still, a lark will wake up in the meadow. Hush, you bird, my baby's sleeping. Maybe we got a dream worth the keeping. Whoa, you take and just keep a creeping and slow clip clop with that shiny little surf fringe on the top. Box social. Curly said maybe you'd let us bring your wagon up from the station. Of course I would. If you'd ask me. Now I got to talk about other things. I can hitch up the horses right now if you say it's all right. <laughs> Come on now, boys, now we do. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> Hi, Will. Hi, Dylan. What happened up at the fair? You do any good in the steer open? I did part of you. I want it. <laughs> good boy, man. Nobody can sing a rope like our territory boys. Can't stay with me, Nanny. Got to get over to A. Dwayne. Don't you remember? Her pa said if I ever was worth fifty dollars, I could have it. Fifty dollars? That's what they gave you for prize money? That's what? Lands. If A. Dwayne's pa keeps his promise, we'll be dancing at your wedding. But if he don't keep his promise, why? I'll take it from right under his nose, and I won't give him the present I brought. Look, Nanny. What I got for A. Dwayne's pa? Oh, excuse me, Nanny. You hold it up to your eye, like this. And then, when you get a good look, you turn it around at the top, and the picture changes. Woo! <laughs> well, I'll be sad game. The card, the little one. Give me that. Oh, no. On a Friday, by Saturday, I learned a thing or two. For up to then, I didn't have an idea of what the modern world was coming to. I counted 20 gas buggies going by themselves almost every time I took a walk. Then I put my ear to a bell telephone, and a strange woman started in to talk. What next? Yeah, what? What next? Everything's up to date in Kansas City. They've gone about as far as they can go. They went and built a skyscraper seven stories high. By the size of building on the club. Everything's like a dream in Kansas City. It's better than a magic man or show. You can turn the radiator on whenever you want to so meet. 
With every kind of comfort, every house is all complete. You can walk the privies in the rain and never wet your feet. They've gone about as far as they could go. Yes, sir! They've gone about as far as they could go. Everything's up to date, kind of city. They've gone about as far as they could go. They call a big theater, they call the Berlin Q. For 50 cents you can see a dandy show. <laughs> <laughs> One of the gals was fat, pink, and gray. As round of love as she was round and broke. Oh, oh, oh. I could swear that she was fat and from her shoulders to her heel. But later in the second act, when she began to fail, she proved that everything she had was absolutely real. She went about as far as she could go. Yes, sir! She went about as far as she could go. What you do now? These here dogs, two steps. It's all their heads now. You ought to know that. 
Well, Lord, take up with a man like that. I ain't said she took up with him. Well, he's here all the time, ain't he? Lives here. Out in the smokehouse. Changed my mind about cleaning the hen house. Living in church tomorrow. I gotta quit early because I'm driving Lauren over to the party tonight. Well, you're driving Lauren to the party? <laughs> Ask her. <laughs> well, what did that make you ball? <laughs> hey, now listen up, Anna. Me and you's got a date tonight. And if you pack a nice box lunch, maybe I'll bid for it. How we going, Curly? In that rig you made up? I'll ride a straddle them lights, winking like lightning bugs. Well, now that there ain't no made up rig. I hired it straight over from Claremont. Lance, you did? Sure did. It's a pretty one, too. Now, when I come pick you up before supper, make sure you got your beauty spots fastened on your proper. Plus, when they fall off, that'd be a right smart turnout. <laughs> the wheels are up, the poster is prime, the dashboard's genuine leather. With pots and glass curtains, you can roll like that in case there's a change in the weather. Well, ladies, I'll see y'all tonight. I got me a cert to pick up. <laughs> you can keep your rig if you're thinking that I care to swap for that shiny little cert with the fridge on the top. Oh, hey, Curly! Tell the girls at Bushy had to stop by here and freshen up before the party. It's a long way to skin moors. That means we'll have a lot of company. You got your camera bag? Hey, Anna Elder, don't go to Skidmore's with Carly tonight. If you do, I'll have to ride with Judd all alone. Well, that's the way you wanted it, ain't it? No, I did it because Carly was so fresh. I'm afraid to tell Judd I won't go, Anna Elder. He'll do something terrible. You ever go down to that smokehouse where he's at? Plenty of times. Why? You ever seen those pictures he's got tacked onto the walls? Oh, yeah, I've seen them, but don't you pay them no mind. Something's wrong inside of that Ellen. I hooked my door right now and fastened my windows against it. Get it, and the sound of his feet walking out outside my room. Lori! Lord, as he comes and looks at me from out from under his eyebrows, like something from the brush somewhere. I know what I'm talking about. You crazy young and stop acting like a chicken with its head cut off. <laughs> Oh, Ann. Why, who do you hear that record that just drove up? <laughs> Why, it's that old peddler. You to the end of the world. The one that tells me that egg beater. Oh, Ann, Lee, has got Ado Annie with him. <laughs> well, Parker's Ado oh, Annie. Never mind about that. Do you know what that peddler told me? He told me that egg beater would beat up eggs and bring out dish rags and, and turn the ice cream freezer. And I don't know what all. <laughs> Yahoo! Ado Annie! <laughs> Hold your horses, peddler man! Cause I want to talk to you! Oh, hi, Aunt Ellen. Hi yourself. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, hello, Lori. Hello. hello. Will Parker's back from Kansas City. He's looking for you. Oh, Will Parker. Oh, I didn't count on him being back so soon. I can see that. Oh. Been riding a piece? Oh, Will the Piddler Man's taking me to the box social tonight? Oh. Bring up sort of a tasty lunch. <laughs> I know, Annie. You took up with that peddler man? Well, not yet. <laughs> but you're, you like Will Parker, don't you? Well, of course I do. I just told him, maybe. Well, don't you like him no more? Of course I do. There ain't nobody like Will. <laughs> then what about this peddler man? Well, th there ain't nobody like him neither. <laughs> Well, you are silly. Uh, now, Lori, you know, nobody paid me no mind last year, count as I was scrawny and flat as a beanpole. Uh, but ever since I kind of rounded up a little, the boys <laughs> ate different to me. <laughs> well, what's so wrong with that? Oh, nothing. I like it. I like it so much when a feller talks flirty to me, I get shaky from horn the hoof, don't you? I can't imagine what you're talking about. <sighs> Lori, haven't you ever just felt sorry for somebody when he acts like he wants to kiss you? Well, you can't go around kissing every man that asks you. Didn't anybody ever tell you that? <laughs> well, yeah, they told me. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't so much a question of not knowing what to do. I know what's right and wrong since I've been ten. I hear a lot of stories and I reckon about how girls are put upon by men. 
Now look at you, a great, big, beautiful lady. Oh, quit a bite of me. If you ain't had no breakfast, go and get yourself a green apple. <laughs> now, Aunt Ellen. Don't call me Aunt Ellen. I ain't your Aunt Ellen, little wart. <laughs> I'm mad at you. <laughs> Don't you go being mad at me. <laughs> Didn't I say I'd give you a present? Something to wear. Oh, but got things to wear. What it have it? What is it? Real silk made in Persia. What I want with an old Persian garter. Oh, yeah, these are nice with the lights and bows on them and all in it. I'll try them on. <laughs> Hold out your foot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Any idea I'm gonna let you slide that garter up my limb? <laughs> Grab on my petticoat, Lori. <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> Funny woman would be much worse if I tried to take her garters off. Oh yeah, because that would make her stockings fall down. <laughs> <laughs> to match the other one. What do you mean, do I want to buy it? I can let you have it for two dollars, four bits. I will take that egg beater and ram it down your windpipe. Oh. <laughs> now, who wants to buy something? How about you, Miss Lori? Must be wanting something a pretty young girl like you. Me? Of course I want something. I want a buckle made out of shiny silver to fasten onto my shoes. I want a dress with lace. I want perfume. I want to be party. I want to smell like a honeysuckle vine. <laughs> Give her a cake of soap. <laughs> I want things I've heard of but never had before. A rubber tarred buggy, a cut glass sugar bowl. I want things to look at and to hold into your hands. I want things to happen to you. So great that they ever did happen to you. Your heart could be, and then you'd fall down dead. I've got just the thing. <laughs> the elixir of Egypt. What's that? Belonged to the Pharaoh's daughter. Give me that. <laughs> it's smelling salt. But a special kind of smelling salt. <laughs> Read what it says on the label. Read it good. Take a deep breath. That's what the Pharaoh's daughter used to do when she had a hard question to decide. Like what print she ought to marry, or what dress she ought to wear to the party, or if she had to cut off somebody's head, she'd take a whip of this. I'll take a bottle of that, Mr. Peddler. Precious stuff. For how much? Two bits. Oh, Lori, you're throwing away your money. It helps you decide what to do. Now, who wants to look at some doodads, things with lace and ribbons running in and out? You mean fancy drawers? All made in Paris. Well, I never wear that kind myself, but I sure do like to look at them. Oh, yeah, these are nice and all, if you ain't going no place. <laughs> Bring your treasures inside. Maybe I'll find something for you to eat and drink. Oh. Well, that's what, don't you? Hey, Allie, uh, Lori and me's been having an argument. About what, baby? <laughs> about, about what you meant when you said that you wanted to drive with me to the end of the world. Well, I didn't really mean to the end of the world. Well, how far do you want to go? I would say as far as Claymore to the hotel. Well, what's at the hotel? Well, in front of the hotel is a veranda, and inside's a lobby, and upstairs, well, upstairs might be paradise. Well, I just thought they was bedrooms. <laughs> For you and me, baby, paradise. <laughs> Oh, dear. I don't think. Oh, dear. 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 Oh,
lot of compounds of sugar in the territory. Will, th this is Allie Hacker. Look, how are you? Don't mind the way I talk. It's all right. I'm going to marry her. <laughs> marry her on purpose. Oh, sure. <laughs> it's a wonderful thing to be married. And I got a brother in Persia. He's got six wives. Six wives? All at once? <laughs> sure. That's the way they do in their country. Not always. <laughs> I got another brother in Persia. He's only got one wife. <laughs> He's a bachelor. Look, Will. Want to know what I got for the first price? I think fifty dollars. Well, that. Oh wait, fifty dollars. Get young. Your pop promised I could marry him if I could get fifty dollars. That's right. He did. Want to know what I done? Spend it all on presents for you. Well, if you spent it, then you ain't got the cash. What well, I got is worth more than the cash. Fellow who sold me this stuff told me. <laughs> but Will, you ain't. Stop saying what Will. Oh, I get a little peace. Oh, wait a minute, he ain't been off my mind since I lived. All those times at the fairgrounds. When I was full oh, some steamers. Oh, my. God. I'd rope under the hooks and pull him up short. And he'd land on his little rump. Then I think he eat. Oh, Will, don't start talking purdy. See a lot of beautiful gals, Casey. Didn't give him one look. Wait, how could you see him if you didn't give him a look? Uh, I mean, I didn't look up. Love him. Huh? Like I look at you. Oh, Will, don't look at me like that. I can't bear it. Don't stop looking until you give me a little low kiss. Well, what's a little low kiss? No, unless it comes from you. Mm -hmm. No, I won't! <gasps> Supposing that I say that her lips are like cherries, or roses are fairies, what you gonna do? Can't you feel my heart palpitating and a bumping? Wait for something, something that's from you. I gotta get a kiss and it's gotta be quick or I'll jump in a creek and die. What's a girl to say when he talks that away? <laughs> Over the romance behind me 
my chest the honey bee who carelessly cajoled me. Somebody else just as sweet as he cheered me and consoled me. Never have I wept into my tea over the deal someone told me. Fine fella. 
Set where he can't get at it. <laughs> or can he? Oh. Well, you see, Pa, he ain't exactly kept it. He spent it all on presents. Oh. Yeah! 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 But, Mr. Carnes, is that fair? Who the hell are you? <laughs> this is Ella Heckham. Well, shut your face, or I'll fill your behind so full of buckshot, you'll be walking around like a duck for the rest of your life. <laughs> sorry, Pa, I didn't mean to pull your beard there. <laughs> if Will ain't got the cash, then maybe your heart will be busted in two like you said. I did not say oh, that. Oh, but yes, you did. No, I did not. Are you trying to make out my daughter to be a liar? No, I'm trying to make out what a liar I am if she's telling the truth. <laughs> what else you been saying to my daughter? Oh, an awful lot of things, Pa. <laughs> when? Last night in the moonlight. Where? Alongside a haystack. Listen, Mr. Carr. I'm listening. What else did you say? Oh, he calls me his Persian kitten. <laughs> Why'd you call her that? I <laughs> Twenty minutes ago, 
I can do what I please. Like my cigar ashes on a rug. Dunk with a donut. Drink from a jug. I'm a happy man. I'm minding my own business like I oughta. Ain't meaning any harm to any blood. I'm talking to a certain farmer's daughter. And then I'm looking down the muzzle of a gun. It's a game so you can't have any fun. Every daughter has a father with a gun. It's a scandal. It's an outrage. I'll account it's a husband today. If you make one mistake when the moon is bright, then they tie you to a contract so you'll make it every night. It's a scandal. It's an outrage. Social tonight? Reckon so. Why? Oh, whoa, nothing, nothing. It's just uh, everybody expects me to take it. Maybe it's just as well you ain't. 
We don't want people talking about us, do we? So, so you do think they're talking about us, do you? Well, you know how they are. Like a swarm of mud wasps. Always got to be buzzing about something. Well, what are they saying? That you're stuck on me? No. Most of the talk is that you're stuck on me. Well, I can't imagine how these ugly rumors started. <laughs> me neither. Why do they think the cup stories not link my name with yours? Why do the neighbors gossip all day behind their doors? I know a way to prove what they say is quite untrue. Here is the gist, a practical list of don'ts.
got your hamper packed? Yes, nearly. Like a hanky? What would I do with an old hanky? You got a smudge on your cheek. Just under your eye. Got a gun, I see. A good one. Colt 45. And uh, what do you do with it? Shoot things. <laughs> oh. Well now that pink picture on a wall, that's that's a naked woman now, ain't it? <laughs> Your eyes don't lie to you. Well look at that. Plum star naked as a jaybird. bird. Oh, oh well, no, she ain't. She got a Got a couple of thinking about this tied on to her. <laughs> Shucks, that ain't the thing to what I got here. Take a look. Holy Moses, Lord Almighty, get your doctor not to make me go blind, that would. That'd give me ideas for sure. <laughs> yep, that's the dinger, that is. <laughs> yeah, sure is a dinger. Well, you know, Jub. That's some nice looking rope you got right there. Sure looks like it's spin nice. Hey, you know what, Parker? You can sure spin a rope. Yeah, look at that. It's a good strong hook, too. You know, Judd, you could hang yourself on that. <laughs> I could what? Hang yourself. Be as easy as falling off a log. The fact is, you stand on the log, right about over here, or the chair, whichever you prefer. Then you tie that rope around your neck, make sure it's good on tied up there first, of course, that's very important. And then, well, you fall off the log, or, or the chair, whichever you would prefer. And then, well, within five minutes or less, if you're lucky, dead as a doornail. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Then, folks would come to your funeral and they'd sing sad songs. Yeah. Oh, they would. You never know how many people like you till you're dead. You'd be all laid out in the parlor. Now, now, come here. All docked out in your best suit with your hair. Come back and a high start collar. Yes, sure. That'd sure be how it be. Would there be any flowers, do you think? Oh, oh, sure. And, and palms, too. All around your coffin. And then the man would come up and, and they'd bare their heads and the woman would sniffle softly. You know, some even faint. The ones that took a shine to you when you was alive. Uh, what women ever could shine to me? Oh, oh, lots of women. Only they don't ever come right out and tell you, less than you die first. Uh, I guess that's so. Oh. They'd sure sing loud when the singing started, though. They sing like their hearts would break. Poor Judd is dead, poor Judd Fry's dead. All gather round his coffin now and cry. He had a heart of gold and he that wasn't very old. Oh, why did such a feller have to die? Poor Judd is dead, poor Judd Fry's dead. He's looking oh so peaceful and serene. 
none of serene That he's all let out to rest With his hands across his chest And his fingernails have never looked so clean <laughs> Then the preacher would get up and he'd say, Folks, we are gathered here to moan and groan over our brother Jet Fry Who hung himself up by a rope in the smokehouse Then there'd be a weeping and a wail from some of the women and then the preacher would get up and he'd say, Judge Fry was the most misunderstood fellow in the territory. People used to think he was an ugly and a mean fellow. They used to call him a dirty skunk and an ornery pig stealer. But the folks that really know him, know that beneath them two dirty shirts he always seemed to wear. <laughs> there be a heart as big as all outdoors, as big as all outdoors. Oh, Judge Fry loved his fellow man. He loved his fellow man. He loved the birds of the forest and the beasts of the field. He loved the mice and the vermin in the barn. And he treated the rats like equals, which was right. Oh, but Judge Fry loved them children. He loved everybody and everything in the whole world, only nobody ever knows it because he never let on. Poor Judd is dead, poor Judd Fry is dead. His friends will weep and wail for miles around. Miles around. The daisies in the dell will give off a different smell. Because poor Judd is underneath the ground. Poor Judd is dead, a candle lights his head. He's gathered around his coffin made of wood. Wood. And folks are feeling sad, cause they used to treat him bad. But now they know no friend is gone for good. Good. Poor Judd is dead. A candle lights his head. He's looking oh so pretty and so nice. He looks like he's asleep. It's a shame that he won't keep. But it's summer. And we're running out of eyes. Poor John. Poor to miss it. Well, I'd like to miss it, huh? Well, maybe you will. Maybe you'll go first. <laughs> maybe. Now tell me, Judd, where'd you work at before we worked here? Up by Quapa, was it? Yeah. And before that, we by Tosa. Lousy they was to me, both of them. Always making out they was better than me. Treating me like dirt. Well, what you did? Get even? Who said anything about getting even? Oh, oh, nobody that I recall. Just kind of came from my head, I guess. Well, if it ever came to getting even, I know how to do it. That? Nah. There's safer ways than that you can use your brains. Remember that farm, the Barlett farm over by Sweetwater? Oh, 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 yes, yes. Well, wasn't there a terrible accident up there uh, five years ago? Burn up the father and the mother and the daughter. There were no accidents. A fellow told me the hide head was stuck in the barlet girl, and he found her in the hayloft with another feller. So, so it was him that burned the place? Took him weeks to buy the kerosene, buy magic and times. The fellow told me in media happened in Missouri, but I knew all along it was the barlet farm. What a lie he was. You know, that makes that fella a kind of murderer, too. I'll get some air in here. You know, ain't told, you ain't told me what business you have here, Curly. We got no cattle to sell, no cow ponies. The old crop is done to spoke for. You know, Judge, you sure relieved my mind considerable. 
There's only one thing here you could want, and it better not be that. <laughs> but that's just what it is. <laughs> it better not be. You keep away from her, you hear? You know, Judd, someone ought to tell Lori what kind of a man you are. For a matter of fact, someone ought to tell you once about yourself. You better get out of here, Curly. <laughs> you know, Judd, a normal fella would be scared to be in here with you by yourself. If he didn't know you, that is. But I know you. You know, in this world, there's two ways a fella can live. Out of doors is one, in a hole is the other. Oh, I've sat on my horse in the brush summers many a time. Heard a rattlesnake rattle, 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 he go. Scared to death somebody's coming close to his hole. Somebody's gonna step on him. Gotta curl up and wait, full of poison. You know, as long as you live in a hole, you got to have perfection. Oh, you can have muscles like iron, but still be as weak as an empty bladder. Less than you got things to barb your hide with. You know, Judd, how'd you get to be the way you are anyway? Sitting in this hole, thinking what you're thinking. You know, you gotta go out and do something healthy for once. Instead of sitting in this hole, a crawling in a festive dog! <laughs> well, look at that. Sure relieved your nerves right there. Hard on the roof, though. You know, I sure wish you'd let me show you something. You see that knot hole over there by the sides of a dime? See it a winking? I want to see if I can hit it. Oh! <laughs> Look at that. Right through the bullet hole, slick as a whistle. Clean right through. I told you I could do it too now, didn't I? What was that? I reckon somebody's coming. Who fired off a gun? Was that you, Curly? Don't sit there, you lummy, and answer when you're spoken to. I shot once. Well, what was he shooting at? See that knot hole over there? I see a lot of knot holes. <laughs> it was one of them. Well, aren't you two a pair of pretty nuts into picking away at knot holes and scaring everybody to death? I'd give you two a good Dutch rum and iron some of the craziness out of you. It's all right. Nobody's hurt. Just a pair of fools swapping noises. Mind if I visit with you, gents? <laughs> it's good to get away from the women for a while. Now that we're all alone, I have some purdies, private knickknacks for to show you. Special for the men folk. Well, gentlemen, I'd love to stay around and talk, but I gotta pick me up a surrey I hired for tonight. <laughs> Who do you think you're taking that surrey? Oh, you know, Aunt Ellen. And Lori, if she'll have me. She won't. <laughs> Maybe she will. She promised she would go with me. She better not change her mind. She better not. Our cousin. <laughs> Don't want none of your things. Say, you got any frog stickers? Oh, you mean one of those long knives. What would you do with that? I don't know. Go a hog or a skunk. It's all the same. Tell you what I would like better than a frog sticker, if you got one. Ever heard one of these things called the Little Wonders? Well, it's something you hold up to your eye and see pictures. All right, that's <coughs> all there is to it. See, so you got a little jigger onto it when you touch it, and out springs your sharp blade. Oh, a spring! <laughs> <laughs> and you say, dear fella, looky here. And he looks through it, and it's right above his chest. You out spring the sharp blade, and bam! Down you come. <laughs> That's a good joke to play on a friend. <laughs> I don't carry anything like that. But I'd like you to look at these straight from Paris. I don't want none things. One real things. I'm going to give me a real woman. You want a woman? I'm having trouble all I can on a woman, and you say you want one. Why? Look at you. 
You're a man who's free to come and go as you please. Got a nice, cozy place. Private. No one to bother you. Artistic pictures. <laughs> they don't talk back to you. I'm tired of all these pictures of women. You're tired of them? Why don't you tear them down and buy some new ones? You get tired of a woman, what can you do? Nothing. You just get tired and tired. I've made up my mind. Say, you want a real woman? Ever heard of a girl named Ado Annie? <laughs> I don't want her. Well, I don't want her either. <laughs> Don't want no things from no peddling. One real things. All oh, my doing here shut up like that fellow says. A crawling, a festering. All oh, my doing in this lousy smokehouse. The floor creaks, the door squeaks. There's a field mouse and nibbling on a broom. And I sat by myself like a cobweb on the shelf. By myself in a lonely room. But when there's a moon, my window and it slants down a beam across my bed. Then the shadow of a tree starts a dancing on the wall, and the dream starts a dancing in my head. And all the things that I wished for turn out like I want them to be. And I'm better than that small owl cow head who thinks he's better than me. And the girl that I want in a break of my arms and her own soft arms give me warm. And her long yellow hair falls across my face just like the rain in a storm. The floor creaks, the door squeaks, and the mouse starts a nibbling on the broom. And the sun flicks my eyes, it was all a pack of lies. I'm awake in a lonely room. I ain't gonna dream about your arms no more. I ain't gonna leave her alone. Going outside, give myself a ride. Hey, Lori, 
Curly? Is a tree about judging its nap instead of Curly? Better tell you when I think things more out clearly. I'm beginning to see things clearer already. I can tell you what you want. <sighs>
wake up, Lord. It's time to start for the party. <laughs> A 
little saying. And learn these words by heart the way you should. I don't say I'm no better than anybody else. But I'll be damned if I am just a good <laughs> Are you serious about it? 
Yes, I'm serious. And do you worship the ground she walks on like I do? That's one answer that better be yes. Yes, yes, yes. the hell you do? <laughs> well, just spend the reset you had for her. That's what I did. See that bag full of presents? Cost 50 bucks. All I had in the world. If you had $50 cash... Why did I need win? And you'd lose it. Yes! I'd lose her! <laughs> Let's see what you got in this bag and I'm gonna buy something. What would you want to think? I'm a peddler, ain't I? I buy and sell and maybe give you real money. Maybe as much as... Well, a lot. <sighs> Oh, look at this hot water bath. It looks French. I'll give you eight dollars for it. Eight dollars. Now that wouldn't be honest. I only pay three few. I said I'd give you eight, and I will. Say that's a cracker. Take your hands off that. That was for a witness. Doesn't fit you so good. <laughs> I'll give you $22. But that's $22.50, not a cent more. <laughs> then, that was for her to wear. I didn't hardly think this was for you. <laughs> Mighty Danny. I'll give you $15. Let's see, 22 plus 15 is 45. And 4550. 4550. Say that's home. Oh, wanna buy some more? Mate. You ever see one of them? You ever see one of these? What made you buy that? Got it for somebody. How'd you mean? It's just funny pictures. It's more than that. It's where is everybody? Where is that Ellen? On the other side of the house, Lord. Where'd you run to? How much do you give me for this thing? I don't handle things like that. I don't think you know what it really is. You sure do. It's just a girl in pink tie. Hey, either you two see Lord? Just went to the other side of the house. Auction's going on. Hey, Judd. He's got one of them things you were looking for. The little wonder. How much? Well, three dollars. <laughs> three dollars <laughs> and uh, fifty cents. <laughs> A lot of money, but I got an idea. Might be worth it. <laughs> now let's see. Three fifty from him and. Uh, Oh, four to five fifty from you. Well, that makes fifty dollars, don't it? <laughs> nope. One dollar short. Darn. What's the figure wrong? Oh, how much for the rest of the stuff this year back? One dollar. <laughs> Darn. Now I got fifty dollars, don't I? Know what that means? Means I'm gonna take eight away and back from it. You wouldn't do a thing like that to me. <laughs> oh, would not. And when her pa finds out who I got most of the money off, of, maybe he'll change his mind about who's smart and who's dumb. Oh, say, young fella, he certainly buncoed me. <laughs> All right. Here's the last two hampers. Who they are, I ain't got no idea. Oh, well, this one's mine and the one next to it is Laurie's. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> well, there's the end of that secret. What am I to be afraid of Wanny's hamper? Hope it! Oh. Four! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who says six? You slim? Ain't nobody hungry no more? What about you, Peather Man? Six bits? No. Come on. Six bits! Six bits? Six bits ain't enough for like Ada Wanny can make? Let's hear a dollar. How about you, Ike? You won her last year? That's right. See, Ada Wynn, you got that same sweet potato pie like last year. You bet. Same sweet potato pie, Ike. 
What'd you say? Well, I say give me a three day belly ache! <laughs> Mine's the last bit I got her for 90 cents. Bid a dollar. 90 cents. 90 cents. Woo, we are getting rich. Another desk for the schoolhouse? Do I hear more? You hear $50. Hey! $50? Nobody ever bid $50 for a lunch. Nobody ever bid 10. He ain't got $50. Oh, yes, I have. And if you're a man of honor, you gotta say Ada Wayne if it belongs to me. Like I said, she would. But where's your money? Right here. In my hand. <laughs> that ain't yours. You just bit it, didn't you? <laughs> just give it to the schoolhouse. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta say it's gonna my daughter's hand. Well, now wait a minute, that ain't fair. Going for $50. Going? Going in? 51. You crazy? 50. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. If I don't bid, I get to keep my money, don't I? Sure can. But I still got $50. This is mine. <laughs> Feeble minded shot poke. Gone for $51. Going, going, and gone. And that means Ada Wayne will get the prize. And I get Ada Wayne. <laughs> What are you getting for your $51? A three-day bellyache. <laughs> now, here's my niece's hamper. I took a peek inside a while ago, and I must say, it looks mighty tasty. What do I hear, gents? Oh, bits. <laughs> Four bits. <laughs> what did you say, Slim? Six? I bet one dollar. More like it, do I hear too? A dollar and a quarter. Two dollars. Two fifty. Three dollars. And two bits. Three dollars and four bits. Four dollars. And two bits. Ain't I gonna hear any more? I got a bid from Judge Fry for four and a quarter. You gonna let him have it? Four and a half. Four and a half, go for four and a half. Go with, go with. 475. 475. Come on, folks. Schoolhouse ain't built yet. I gotta give me a nice chimney, right? Five dollars. Five dollars? Go for five dollars. Go with, go with. And two bits. Can't afford no more. Um, come on, folks. We need more money. I mean, not for cold duck with stuffing in that lemon meringue. Six dollars. Six dollars. <laughs> going for six dollars. Going, going and. Six dollars and two bits. My, you're stubborn, Judd. Mr. Carnes is a richer man than you. And I know he likes custard with raspberry syrup. Ain't I gonna hear any more? No. The old drop out, can't you see? You got enough, Aunt Ellen. Let's get on. Here's my money. Hold on! I ain't said going, going, gone yet. Then say it. Going to Judge Fry for six dollars and two bits. Going. Going and. Well, now, who'd you say was getting Laura's basket? <laughs> <laughs> Just right. And for how much? Six and a quarter. Well, I don't figure that's quite enough, do you? It's more than you got. I got me here a saddle that cost me $30. <laughs> you can't be saddles. Gotta be cash. Well, there's surely a $30 stall saddle must mean something to somebody. I'll give you 10. You got cash? Right in my pocket. So. Don't be a fool, boy. You can't earn a living without a saddle. Now, like country talk. How high are you going? Higher than you, no matter what. And now I'm willing to bid up this $10 Joe's gimmick. Go for $10. Going, going, $10 and. $10 is two bits. Curly. Uh, now, most of you boys know my horse, Dunn. She, she's a kind of nice horse. 
the gentle and, and well broke. Don't sell Don. Carly ain't worth it. I'll give you 25 for her. <coughs> I'll sell Dunny. And Eller, that makes a total of 35. Carly, you're crazy. But it's all for the schoolhouse, all for learning and education. All right, going for $35. Going, going. Hold on! I ain't finished bidding. You just about put up everything and gone the world, didn't you? Can't bid your clothes, because they ain't worth nothing. Can't bid your gun, because it took two years to do farm work. Oh, for Lord. Here it is. $42 and 31 cents. <laughs> Anybody want a gun? <laughs> Now come on, you joke. Got a last Thanksgiving, it's worth a whole lot. Carly, please don't sell your gun. Here's sixteen dollars for it. So. <laughs> and Ella, that makes a total fifty-one dollars. Going, going, and gone for fifty-one dollars. Ain't nobody gonna cheer or nothing. <laughs> But the bin was there. Come on, Calvin. Shake the farmer's hand. Sure. I'll shake hands. No hard feelings, Curly. That's better. Oh. Say, I want to show you something, Curly. Excuse us, Lord. Ever seen one of these before? Now, try just what is that? Something special. You just. Put up to your eye like this. Curly! Curly! What are you doing? Well, what am I doing? Nothing much. What you doing squealing at a man like that for? You're scaring the living lights out of me. Well, stop looking at those old French pictures and, and ask me for a dance. You brought me to the party, didn't you? All right, you crazy old woman. I ask you to dance. I'll dance you across any meadow you want. Pick out banjo to pieces, Sam. <laughs> Well, anyway, I got the fifty dollars cash. Now you just name the day. August fifteenth. Why August fifteenth? Well, it was the first day I was kissed. Funny, I didn't remember that. Well, you wasn't there. Oh. oh. Well, now look at here. We gotta have a serious talk. Now that you're engaged to me, you gotta stop having fun. Uh. <laughs> With other fellas, that is. Oh. You'll have to be a little more standoffish. One fellers offer you a buggy ride. I'll give an invitation of a crawfish and dig myself a hole where I can hide. I heard how you was kicking up some capers when I was up in Kansas City Mall. I heard some things you couldn't print in papers from fellers who've been talking like they know. Oh, foot! I only did the kind of things I order, sort of. To you, I was as faithful as can be. For me, them stories about the way I lost my bloomers, them rumors, a lot of tempest in a pot of tea. The whole thing don't sound very good to me. Well, you see, I, I go and sow my last while do. I cut out all shenanigans. I save my money, don't gamble or drink in the back room down at Flannery. Oh, stop! I give up lots of other things a gentleman never mentions. But before I give up any more, I want to know your intentions. Is it all or nothing with you? It can't be in between. It can't be now and then. No after that romance will do. I'm a one woman man, home of the top, all complete with slippers and pop. Take me like I am or leave me be. 
If you can't give me all, give me nothing. My nothing's what you'll get from me. Not even something. Nothing's what you'll get from me. But please, quiet. Hey! We you guys get away from me, won't you? Uh, hey! Stop! Oh. It can't be now and then No after that romance will do Would you build me a house All painted wet Cute and clean and pretty and bright Big enough for two but not for three Supposing that we should have a third one They better look a lot like me <gasps> The spit damage They better look a lot like me oh, Hey, what are you? Oh, you see? Oh. Mm -hmm. Hey! Hey! <laughs> hey, that's Persian! by yourself. Not a minute more you had to. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm here with you by myself now, ain't I? You wouldn't. You could have gone, Alvin. Mornings to say shut up in your room all the time and nights and bump scale out the front porch and out on to the side. Last time I see you alone it was winter with the snow six inches deep in the drifts and I was sick. You brought me that hot soup out of the smokehouse and I was still in bed. I had to shave for three days. You ask if I had any fever, you put your hand in my head to see. I remember. Do you? Bet you don't remember as much as me. I remember every word you ever said, everything you ever done. Can't think of nothing else. See? See how it is? No! I ain't good enough, am I? I'm a hot hand, got dirt in my hands, pig slop, ain't fit enough to touch you, cause you're better, so much better. Yeah, we'll see who's better, Miss Lori. Then you wish you weren't so free of your hairs. You're such a fine lady. Are you making threats to me? Or are you standing there trying to tell me how to allow you to slobber over me like a hog? Why, you're gonna do something about it? Well, you're nothing but a mangy dog, and somebody ought to shoot you. You think so much about being a hard hand. Well, I'll just tell you something that'll rest your brain, Mr. Judd. You ain't a hard hand for me no more. You can pack up your duds and scoot. I've got better <coughs> ideas than that. You ain't to come on this place anymore, you hear me? I'll send yourself any place you say, but just much set foot inside the pasture gate. I'll sick the dogs out of you! Well, since you're saying, brought it on yourself. Can't help it, can't never rest. Told you the way it was, and you wouldn't listen. What's that? Oh, 
it's me, Lord. Hi, Alicia and Ada Lanny. She's gone. <laughs> well, could you do something for me? Go and find Curly. I really want to see him. I've got to see him. Why don't you turn around and look at him, you crazy woman? <laughs> Curly! Well, you found yours. I gotta go hunt for mine. <laughs> now, tell me what on earth is ailing the bed of the clay? Well, by gum, if you ain't crying. Curly, I'm afraid. I'm afraid for my life. Well, good, great God Almighty. Oh, don't you leave me. They're jumping toads to you. Don't find me a crime. I can't help it. Cry your eyes out. <laughs> Here, I'll show you. <laughs> that, that right there is all about a man kid's dad in public. No, no, now get away from me, you. You ain't laughing, No, no, I'll get away from me, you and get plumb away from oh, me. Oh, you're sitting on the rake! <laughs> Oh, you do, do you? <laughs> you hear me? The, well, now, Miss Laura, you, you get on right back over here where, where you were, and I'll get right back over here where I am, and, and you're going to tell me what you want with me. Well, Chuck was here. I never seen him quite like him before. He, he talked wild, and he, he threatened me, so I'll find him. I wish I hadn't. Uh, there's no telling what he'll do now. Fire? Well, then that's all there is to it. Tomorrow morning I'll get you a new hired man, and, and tonight I'll stay on the farm, in case you're scared of that old hound dog coming back. Now you quit your worrying, or I'll... Uh... Uh, Miss Laura, what do you think about marrying me? Gracious, what I'd want to marry you for. Well, I'm sure you can think of a few reasons. <laughs> Can't think of hardly anything right about now. Miss Laura, please marry me. I, I don't know what I'm gonna do if you don't. Curly, I'll marry you. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm gonna have his man around once we're married. Oh, I gotta be a farmer, I see that now. And then I gotta quit the way so the rope can start, start blistering my hand the new way. Oh, they're making this state into a territory, and they're making that territory part of the union, and we're gonna have a family in that union, raise a couple boys, and they're gonna be the best mom to those boys. And... Oh, Lord, I remember the first time I laid eyes on you. It was at the fair, and you was riding one of Blue Star's gray fillers. And I turned to the fella next to me and I said, Who's that skinny little thing with a bang hanging down her forehead? <laughs> I remember. You was riding Bronx that day. Yes, I was. And one of them throwed you. That's... One of them did not throw me. I guess you jumped off then. Uh, yeah. I jumped off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you sure did. You know, to anybody out here in this whole yard, I want you to know something. <laughs> Miss Laura Williams is my girl, my girl, and she don't know that one asked me to marry her. Carly, they're gonna hear you all from the two seat. You know what? Let. <laughs> Let people say.
Well, I'll say goodbye here, baby. Oh, you can't stay to drink to Carly and Lori? No, time for the lonely gypsy to get back to the open road. Oh, I wish I could come with you so you wouldn't be so lonely. <laughs> oh, wait, oh, Annie. There's a man who loves you like nothing ever loved nobody. Oh, Annie. A man who will stick to you all your life, and that man for you is Will Parker. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I like Will quite a lot. He's a fine fella. Strong like an ox, young, handsome. Yeah, I love Will, I guess. <laughs> of course you do, and you love his bright blue eyes and the way his mouth wrinkles when he smiles. You love him too? <laughs> I love him because he'll make my Ado Annie happy. <laughs> goodbye, my baby. I'll show you how we say goodbye in Persia. <laughs> We have an old song we sing in Persia. One goodbye is never enough. <laughs> I'm so happy you're marrying such a wonderful man as Bill Parker. You deserve a fine fella. You got one. Oh, I will. Ailey's just saying goodbye. Oh. oh, Will. I wanted to say goodbye to you, too. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> I just saw the last one. <laughs> you two were made for each other. Be good to her will, and you be good to him, if you don't mind. I'm a friend of the family. Did you say you was going? Yes, I must get back to the open road. The poor gypsy. Goodbye, my baby. I'll show you how we say goodbye in my country. Persian goodbye. <laughs> Lucky fell, I wish it was me she was marrying instead of you. It don't seem to make an awful lot of difference. <laughs> well, I must get back to the open road. Goodbye. 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 You ain't gonna think of that old pedro anymore, are you? Of course not. Never think of nobody. Listen, I'm with him. Then I'm never gonna leave your side. Even if you don't, even if you never go on a trip or nothing, can't you once in a while just give me one of them Persian goodbyes? A Persian goodbye? Well, that's nothing compared to an Oklahoma <laughs> hello. <laughs> hello, Will! <laughs> Drunk thugs. Never seen you so sober at a wedding party. Been scared. Been scared all night that Judd Fry would come up and start with Curly. Well, Judd Fry's been out of the territory for three weeks now. He's back. Seen him up at Claremore last night, drunk as a lord. That's no good, Carmen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where the wind and the wheat can sure smell sweet when the wind comes. 
find me on the rain. Oh, Oklahoma, every night, my honey, let it high. Sit alone and talk and watch a hawk making lazy circles in the sky. We know we belong to the land, and the land we belong to is grand. So when we say, Yeah, I get my own, yeah.
going. I'm going to stop Ada Wayne from killing your wife. Mind your own business. <laughs> Promise to take care of her. Maybe it's better for you and Curly not to go away tonight. I don't know what has had to happen to us when everything was so fine. Don't let your mom know. I can't forget it. I never will. That's all right. Lori, baby, if you can't forget, don't try to, honey. Oh, lots of things happen to folks. Sickness or being poor and hungry. Oh, we can even always afraid to die. But that's the way it is. Cradle to grave. But you can stand it. There's one way. You've got to be hard. You've got to be. You can't deserve a sweet and tender in life unless you're tough. And trust me, baby, you are tough. I wish I was the way you are. Fiddlesticks. Scrawny and all. You couldn't hire me to be the way I am. What I'd do without you. You're such a silly. Sure, so you're born. <laughs> Is he alive? Now, now, Laura, this is Coeur land. He's a federal marshal, and, and he thinks I should turn myself <coughs> in T tonight. Tonight? Your train leaves Claremore in 20 minutes. Best thing is for Curly to go off on his own accord and tell the judge. Why, well, then say it and get it over with. You're the judge, ain't you, Andrew? <laughs> yes, but it won't be proper. You gotta do these things in a court. Oh, fiddlesticks, let's do it here and say we did it in court. Can't do that. That would be breaking the law. Well, let's not break the law. Let's just bend it a little. Come on, Andrew, start the trial. We only got but a few minutes. Andrew, I got to protest. Oh, shut your trap. We can give the boy a fair trial without locking him up on his wedding night. Here's the long and short of it. First, I gotta ask you. What's your plea? That means why'd you do it? 
Oh, well, well, he's been bothering Lori for quite a while, and I always said it's Just someday. a minute, just a minute. Don't let your tongue wobble around your mouth like that. <laughs> Answer my question. What happened to that that made you kill him? He came at me with a knife. And you had to defend yourself, didn't you? Yes. And, and, and furthermore... Never mind the furthermore. The plea is self-defense. Now, is there a witness here who saw this happen? Sure, get your self-defense, all right? Try to stab me with the frog sticker. I got a funny feeling about this, Andrew. I sure got a funny feeling. Well, you'll have a funny feeling when I tell your wife you're carrying on with another woman. Oh, I ain't carrying on to no one. Maybe not, but you'll sure feel funny when I tell your wife you are. <laughs> Laugh all your life, but as a federal marshal. Oh, shit up about being marshal. We just ain't gonna let you send the boy to jail on his wedding night. We just ain't gonna let you, so shut up. Let's pull them to the train, Curly, sir, and we'll be the horses. <laughs> Hold on, man. You said the verdict yet? Well, the verdict's not guilty, ain't it? Of course, but... Well, then say it. Not, not guilty. guilty! Not guilty. Watch it, Jane. <laughs> what? Ain't no anywhere on earth have you been? Oh, well, me and Will been having a misunderstanding. Right, but he explained it just fine. <laughs> oh, my Oh, what a beautiful day. I've got a beautiful feeling. Everything's going my way. Hey, Friday and Groove, you ready? Here we come. Oh, what a beautiful day. I got a beautiful feeling. Everything's going my way. Hey, 
amazing directors, Miss Chrissy, Miss Rochelle, right there, and Miss Barry. Um, Thank you so much for giving us the best senior musical yes. possible. Yes, and it is Miss Barry's first year with us.